it's annoying busy work, and it's very clearly busy work. It's like there, it is. We, we have to put bad guys out here, and I wouldn't mind ordinarily if the guard posts respawned every once in a while. It's logical. There, there are governments at work here. There are factions. And if there was an empty guard post, they would restaff it. But not in the same night. Give it, like, a day. Give it a day of game time before the guard post re respawn. Give it a few hours. But not every time I go back there. It's like every time I, I go and uh, If I leave, like, a hundred yards of that place and I go back, there's dudes there. It's just, it's, it's, piss, it's just pissing me off. And I can't keep playing this game. Just just make the guard post not respawn. But the big one, Fallout 3. I have been playing Fallout 3 like crazy. Um, almost like when I was playing Oblivion, which is the, 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 the annoying byline I always heard when describing Fallout 3 was, it's Oblivion with guns. Yes, it does play a lot like Oblivion, but there's nothing wrong with that. I liked Oblivion. I played that one to death. Um... The one thing, I, I, I don't mind the fact that it has guns. It, it feels so good to come back to the Fallout universe. Uh, it, it's just great to finally experience that in like a first-person viewpoint. It kind of feels like it's, it's finally grown up. You know, um, the, the setting, the characters, the, it, it just feels really good to come back to. Um, and for that alone, it's worth playing if you were... If you were at all interested by the premise, if you liked the previous Fallout games before, it's very it's very fun to play. There are problems, however, uh, just from a design standpoint. Um, the, I think the most common complaint I've heard, and I agree with it, is the VAT's targeting system. What happens is when you're under attack, you can push the V button. I, I'm playing on the PC, but you can you can kind of stop time for a minute. Focus on a target, and it will highlight all the little target zones, like the legs, the arms, the torso, and the head. Um, it'll give you a percentage chance to shoot every one of them. So what you can kind of do is queue up attacks, and then the computer will automatically take control of your character and take the shots for you. And when you do this, you have a much higher chance of critically hitting the guy, causing more crippling damage, uh, causing greater chance of critical hits, things like that. Um... Here's the issue with that. One, it kind of takes you out of the game. It takes you out of the sense that you are... It's a first-person shooter. It really takes that control out of your hands. I know why it's there. It's there because in the previous games, you would pretty much always use the, the, the targeting system to get critical hits. You, you wouldn't want to do it any other way because when the monsters got really badass when you were fighting super mutants and that, you kind of needed those critical hits. You kind of needed to cripple stuff to move on. Same thing here, uh, you will almost always use VATS because um, the monsters move around, it makes sense to use VATS, the computer has a much better chance of hitting these locations than you do, and when you use it, you have a much higher chance of critically injuring the guy. So every chance you get, you will use VATS, and I think it kind of breaks that uh, feeling that you're in a shooter. Um, it makes you dependent on using the targeting system, which is not a good thing. Uh, maybe you'll disagree with me, maybe you won't. I just think it was... I, I understand why it's there, I just disagree with the notion of putting it in in this case. I think maybe there's something they could have done in real time, maybe to assist this. Uh, besides that, uh, I have never done anything other than shoot for the head in anything. I, I don't understand why you would shoot for legs... I've never fought, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna blow your brains out if I'm going to target anything. I'm not going to go for the left arm. I don't know why I would go for that unless, the, I've never met an enemy that would focus entirely on having a sword. Maybe I would do it then, but uh, I've always gone for the head. Um, the other thing is, same with Oblivion. Uh, I don't know why they're so, they're so happy to let you pick up and search everything. Um... You can open everything, and you'll you'll find something in every box. You'll find something in every locker. But I don't really want to carry a box of 20-year-old instant mashed potatoes. No, no, actually 200-year-old instant mashed potatoes. I don't really want to carry that around, thank you very much. I, I, I don't know why every time I open an ancient refrigerator, I have to know that there's a box of, like, ancient... 
uh, junior mints that I can carry around with me. Um, I don't really want to carry bottles of radioactive water around. Useful though it may be if I chose to take three perks to let drinking radioactive water slightly less stupid, it's still pretty stupid. I don't want to carry radioactive water around with me. I don't want to carry an ancient leaf blower around with me. Um, although it's probably usable in some item construction thing. On the other hand, the items you construct are never a good thing. You, I can find pretty much anything I need. I don't need to carry around items to make better ones. For instance, uh, I, in Fallout I always make the same basic character. I, I basically make a smooth-talking pistol arrow who can shoot you in the eyes from 90 yards. Basically Doc Holliday from Tombstone. I don't know what it is. I just really like doing that. But uh, I never saw the point in making a martial artist. You know, like having Bruce Lee wander around the wasteland sounds like a good idea, except when you have gigantic radioactive mutants with, like, tentacled torsos coming at you. Stuff you really wouldn't want to touch with your bare hands. You know, uh, ten-foot-tall uh, ten super mutants. I wouldn't punch that. Um, and besides that, almost everyone you encounter has guns. Um... Maybe that's just me. Uh, although I did rethink that when I finally discovered the option to make the shish kebab, which is a flaming broadsword, which you can carry around with you. Although that romance was... It did peter out pretty quickly when I almost immediately discovered uh, a better weapon just laying on the ground called the Ripper, which is a... Uh, which is a, uh, a chainsaw knife, which instantly did more damage than the shish kebab and was easier to use and less fragile. I don't know, uh, the bottle cap mines, I pick, I, I have literally like 65 frag mines I don't know what to do with. I don't need to carry around items to make more mines. I don't care if they do more damage, I'll just throw more frag mines down if I need to drop something. Uh, I don't need to make Nuka-Cola grenades. I have a lot of grenades already. So the crafting, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I think it was a big mistake putting any points into repair because... Using the workbench really hasn't paid off for me so far. Um, and I, I've never been that short of money that I couldn't just pay somebody to fix my armor for me. Anyway, uh, but it is a lot of fun. I'm just saying there's there's a few design decisions that that just don't really work and they're not worth putting your attention into, I, I think. Um, I, I think the game would have been a lot better off without VATS. But it still is pretty fun going into that bullet time and, and blowing people's heads off in, in slow motion. I guess it saved me the effort of manually aiming. And I guess if I really objected to it that much, I just wouldn't use it. I don't know. Um, oh, that's the other thing. Is it just me, or do decapitations happen way too frequently in Fallout 3? It almost seems like every time I shoot somebody in the head, their neck is made out of Twix, and their head just pops off in some glorious fountain of sludge. I don't know, it just seems like it's really too easy to decapitate people, although maybe you get a giggle out of that. Uh, also, the, the the Sarah Palin wannabe who's who keeps giving you missions, and oh, it's so cute, you're going out to get some stuff at the Super Duper Mart. I, 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 for some reason, she doesn't annoy me as much as she probably should, although I'm probably on the really short list of people who liked her. Um... But that's Fallout 3. Um, if you're a fan, you will still love it. Uh, if you liked Oblivion at all, you will still love it. Uh, actually, ironically, I went back to play the, uh, the, uh, the old Fallout and Fallout 2 games, and I was surprised at how uh, little I was able to get into those games. I know, it's blasphemy. I love those games to death. I still love those games. But there are some things that hold it back. And... I, they didn't seem to be that much of a problem at the time when I first started playing these games. Um, and the number one problem for those games is the soundtrack is terrible. In fact, it's almost non-existent. Uh, the, the, it's just very low, almost inaudible, low percussion, low moaning sounds. Um, there's basically no music except for like small bongo riffs every once in a while. It, it's just, when the action picks up, the music doesn't pick up, there's no sense of urgency, there's no sense of action, no thrill in the music. So when there's a gunfight breaking out, the music does not change from the low, like, buto monks that keep just, oh, The music never escalates. 
Um, nowadays, that would be unforgivable. You would you would scream bloody murder over that kind of thing if the music never picked up when the action started. I guess at the time, it was just so cool to be playing this really deep, involving, engrossing game with a unique storyline. We just didn't care about that. Nowadays, though, I go back and it was putting me to sleep. It really was. Um, 